Hi YouTube and welcome to another video. Thanks for joining me. Hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification so next time I upload a video you can come along and join me in my craft room. Today I'm going to be continuing my series on my praise quilt. This is a praise quilt that I created a couple of years ago. It was going to be my 2020 project, but with everything that happened, me and my friends, we weren't able to get together once a month like we normally do, so we could all keep one another safe, but this was the quilt that I was going to make in 2020, and so I've decided that I'm just going to go ahead and start it in 2021 because we're still not getting together on a regular basis, and I wanted to go ahead and get the project started since it's already a year delayed. Also, I created this quilt in an app from the App Store, which was a crossword puzzle um, app, but that app no longer exists. I've had this puzzle for quite a few years because I created another puzzle in that app, and then I created this puzzle after I finished that one. Um, so I have to find another new way to um, get uh, create a crossword puzzle, and I, I have a few other things I'm looking into. So this is a praise quilt and the reason it's called a praise quilt because most of the words on here are the attributes of God like never changing, extraordinary, author, defender, Yeshua, you know, helper, wise, trustworthy, powerful, overcomer, all of those things that attribute or attributes of God. So I created this puzzle um, like I said, I created another puzzle, be, another one before, and the first one that I created was this quilt right here, and this quilt is a quilt of all of the last names of my family members. I have a really large family, so these are all the last names of family members, um, cousins, aunts, uncles, you know, um, their kids. So I use the same method that I'm going to be using with this quilt to create um, the new quilt that I'm making. And um, this was some fabric that I got a Tuesday morning in a jelly roll, which is a round set of fabrics that are two already pre-cut to 2.5 inches. And so um, I, I created the puzzle and then I put it together and then I put the words on it. My daughter, she helped me put the words on it. And these words, these letters were created with my Cricut and Caesar Easy Weed black glitter vinyl. So I'm also going to be using black glitter vinyl to do this puzzle as well. Um, I was thinking maybe I might use purple, but I'm not sure. I'm thinking I'm going to use black again. And so this is what I'm going to be creating, but on a much larger um, scale. So, um, so you'll get a sense of what's, what's being made. So I've gotten started on some of the process of doing the quilt. And so um, the blue part of the quilt this time is going to be purple. And I've already sewed my strips, subcut them into the two and a half inch pieces that I need. Um, so here are some of them. This is six, this is four. And then I have a whole stack of them over here that are eight, eight inches long. So I'll go through the puzzle and I'll go through like line one. I'll count all the blue, blue squares, which will be purple. And then I'll see how many it is, and then I'll undo some of those until I get the row. And then I'll put one white one, then I'll do a bunch of more purples, do one white one. So I do, I do it row by row um, is how I put it together once I put it together. So today I'm going to be cutting. I've also created my white. Now this one, I stripped the whole thing together. I did the whole row of strips. Um, some of the other ones, when I did the purple ones, I didn't do any long strips like this. What I did was, I did two together, then I did two more together, then I took 
and I sewed those two sets together to make four. So I made sets of four. Then I took and I sewed those four together and I made a strip of eight. And then what I do is I press all the seams going in one direction. All the seams go in one direction. And then I fold it in half and I subcut it a bunch of different ways. So that's the part that I'm at now for the white. So this, since this one I've already um, folded and pressed and everything. And, and pay attention because like all my strips are not the same size. So like this one is shorter than, you know, uh, some of the other ones, but I'll still sew it on there. And then as I'm subcutting, if it doesn't fit, I'll just get rid of that. I'll get rid of that one. So one of the ways that I'm going to um, subcut my cut my strips is I'm going to use a rotary cutter, and this is a 60, I think a 60 millimeter rotary cutter. And I'm going to take my ruler, and then I will just put my um, I will put my big piece. I have a big mat here. I think I got, somebody gave it to me, but you can get big mats at Joann's or Michael's Hobby Lobby, any place. So I'll just put it on the lines and then I'll take this one. And since this is a long one, I'll just put it on the lines, line it up, and then I'll sub cut it into my two and a half inch strips but this one i'm just getting rid of the salvage so then i'll find my two and a half inch on this ruler which is right here and i'll put it on the lines i'll try to line up one of the lines on the ruler with the bottom so i'll know that it's straight and try to line up one of line the two and a half inch line up on here and then i'll go about and i'll sub cut this and then once I'm done with that one, I'll just do the same thing. I'll find my two and a half inch mark, find a line at the bottom that will line it up. Make sure that it's two and a half. Measure twice, cut once so that you're not wasting your fabric. And I don't know exactly how much fabric this is going to take. So I think I had two or either three yards of the white and I use my scraps for the for the purple so I have a lot I have a whole bag of scraps so I will continue to just go down the line and um, I'll continue to go down the line and cut off uh, segments of two and a half inches until this whole piece is finished out so that's one of the ways that you can do it, and I'll finish cutting those in a second. And then another way is I took, um, once I sewed the strips, I, these ones are only a half and not as long. So I, all the seams are folded in one way. So I, what I'll do with this one is I have a, a little, a different type of ruler that I've had for since I've been a quilter probably <laughs> 20 years. This is my second one. Um, the first one, I just wore it out. I use it so much. But this is called a, um, it's called a shape cut. And it's made by June Taylor. And I get, I got mine at Joann's. So what it is, it has these little slits that you can put your rotary cutter in. These little slits. So what I'll do is I will just, line it up like I did the other one, line it up at zero, put it on the bottom all the way across so I know that I, my cut will be straight. Let me put this on there a little bit better than that. I'll put it on the bottom so I know that my cut will be straight. I'll put it at zero. And then the first cut that I will make will be, and if you um, feel like that you can't keep that straight, I have some um, I have some little weights 
sometimes I have these little weights and I've had these for probably 20 30 years so I don't even know where I got them from but sometimes I'll just put the weights on top so that things won't shift but then I'll cut this at um, zero and then I'll go to two and a half and then I'll go to five and then I'll go to seven and a half and then I'll go to 10 and then I'll move my weights off move my shape cut and then I'll have my two and a half inch segments so then I'll put since I know my my edge is straight I'll just take my shape cut again I'll put it down and I'll just put it on the bottom or it doesn't necessarily have to be on the bottom I could I can go on line one because it's zero one two so I'm gonna put one line on an empty line on my mat and then I'll put line one going across and then but it's still at zero because I'm not gonna recut again to sh square it up because it's already been squared up so then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna start at two and a half then I'm gonna start at five then I'm gonna go to seven and a half and then I'm gonna go to ten and and then I'll have more of my strips and like some of the word letters if you notice like the word wise doesn't need eight like this has eight so what I'll do is I'll take a seam ripper and I'll just take that out so I'll use that four or I might have a word that needs eleven so I'll take this eight and then take three off of a different one and add those together so I just wanted to strip them to make it easier and to make it go faster um, if I already have like a lot of things that are already prepared it goes so much quicker and this part right here I can't get another eight out of I mean I can't get another two and a half inch segment out of so I'll just throw that in the scrap bin or um, I'll just throw it away so that's pretty much what I'm doing um, this week making a making a praise quilt um, but this one's a family quilt but the one I'm going to be making right now is considered a praise quilt so I hope that you'll continue to walk this journey with me and um, see how this project comes out I think it's going to be really nice it's probably going to be four times the size of this one but um, I'm going to just make it to see how big it is because it's the first time I've ever made it. So I'm hoping that it's going to come out just as good as this one. This is my first one. And then I made another one for a relative. She commissioned me to make her one. So I made her one in, in her favorite colors, which were fall colors. And that one came out beautiful as well. And um, she really liked it. And hers is a little bit bigger than mine because... Um, when I presented this one at a party, a family party, I realized that some family members' names got left off. And so they wanted their names on the next one because there's no way to add it on this one. So I, when I created the second one, I did add those extra names. So I'm hoping that, um, that you guys will join me in this journey as I continue in this journey to make this praise quilt. And um, thank you for joining me today. Make sure that you give this video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment on what you're working on or, you know, what type of um, crafts that you like to do because I do a lot of different crafts. This is just one that I'm doing right now. But I would be very interested to see what kind of crafts that you like to do. So give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so every time I um, upload a video, you can be notified. And also... In the comments, if you have any questions about the process, um, let me know the questions and um, I'll be more than happy to help you. And if you don't know what a jelly roll is, because I created this one from a jelly roll, let's see.
you might have seen these at Joann's or Hobby Lobby or somewhere. This is a jelly roll. I had a much bigger one. This is a small one, but they're like two and a half inch pieces of fabric that are already cut and ready to go. So you could just pull them apart and sew them together and they're already like a collection that they go together. So you can use one of these or you can just use um, fabric that you already have. Like I have a whole ton of fabric. So I just pulled from some of the fabrics that I already had. But thank you for watching. God bless you. You have an awesome and an amazing day. Be blessed. Bye-bye.